be a woman soon I love you so much I can't count all the ways I die for your girl and all they can say is He's not your kind They never get tired of putting me down And I never know when I come around What I'm gonna find Don't let them make up your mind Don't you know girl You'll be a woman soon Please, come take my hand, girl, you'll be a woman soon, soon, you'll need a man. How you doing? Justin here today. We are checking out Girl You'll Be a Woman Soon by Neil Diamond. Uh, fantastic song, really beautiful arrangement, great feel, really tasty grooves and stuff, even if the subject matter is bordering on being a little bit sketchy to me. But anyway, um, it's a beautiful song, really quite a few different approaches to playing it as well. Uh, so I'm going to go through a few of the different uh, ways that you can do it from real kind of beginnery kind of stuff to, to slightly more advanced uh, ideas. So first of all, always the thing that we do is we break down and keep the rhythm real simple, make sure that you know where the chords are. Uh, particularly a song like this one, it's a pretty tricky one to sing. There's a lot of words that you've got to fit in. Uh, so you want to really make sure that you've got all of your, your rhythm kind of skills pretty automated if you're going to try and get those words in and make sure as well that you can sing it on its own before you try and sing it and play guitar at the same time. So practice just singing it, practice just playing it, and then put the two together if that's what you're going to go for. Because uh, yeah, I found it a little bit bit of a tricky when I sing and play at the same time. So removing all of the fancy stuff and keeping it real simple. We're starting, we've got a capo third fret by the way, in case you hadn't noticed that big red thing there on my guitar neck. Uh, we're starting off with an E minor chord. Go. Boom, dun, dun. I'm going to show you that bit in a little bit later, but we're keeping it simple. So E minor. Dun, 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 a, you'll be a D chord. And then we're starting with the rhythm on the E minor. Okay, so again, E minor, the very intro, E minor. Girl, dun, 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 a, you'll be a D chord. And then E minor for two bars of the intro. Then we're staying on E minor for the verse. Love you so much, can't count all the ways. E minor again for your girl, that's all they can say is D. He's not your kind, so you got two bars of D. And back to two bars of E minor, and you're putting me down. And I never know when I come around to two bars of D. Then you've got two bars of C. One, two, don't you know E minor to A? You'll be a D chord to E minor. And then again, E minor, bum 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 A, come take my D. Oh my god, this song's getting even worse, but anyway, let's plow on. E minor, bum da da A, you'll be a D chord, E minor. Struggling to keep a straight face, but anyway, E minor, bum da da A, you'll need a D. Just your dirty mind, I'm not thinking anything like that at all. Okay, so the uh, verse sequence is two bars of E minor, two bars of D, two bars of E minor, two bars of D, two bars of C. Okay, keeping that pretty simple there for the verses. For the chorus, we got the E minor, A, D, E minor, E minor, A, D, D, and then that sequence is repeated. That's E minor, A, D, E minor, E minor, A, D, D. Okay, it's really important that you just get used to just playing along with this simple strumming. Don't get, do anything, try, try and do fancy stuff with the strumming yet. Just keep the, the strumming just simple down on the four and the, you know, see if you can get this. Love you so much, can't count all the ways I die for you, girl, and all they can say is he's not your kind. And even if you're not gonna sing, try and play along with the original recording and keep that four down strum to the bar because that's the thing that you're going to find the most important is just being able to play along and keep the time and get your chord changes in the right place 
Are you going to be able to do that? Two, you might up. And so just really keeping it, keeping it that simple and being able to play along with the original recording is a really, really good idea, right? Before you start trying to do anything else fancy, if you can't keep it like that and just really lock it in and, and, and make it feel good, then you're not going to have a chance. And if you're singing, you definitely need to be able to sing with that simple strumming before you start trying to do anything else at all, okay? So the original recording has a few interesting things going on rhythmically and, and, and strumming pattern-wise. Uh, the strumming pattern on the original recording is uh, a little bit tricky. In fact, let me give you one other one first of all, a, a kind of a, a, an intermediate pattern before we just launch straight into the new one. So uh, one that I really like, it. one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four, up, down, up, 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 up, down, up. It's a really nice little pattern for this. One and two and three and four and 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 now what's going on there because it's a really interesting pattern this we're doing all of the strums in the bar but missing out beats two and four okay so just on the E minor one and two and three and four and down up miss up down up miss up one and two and three and Now that very last and, just so you're aware, is very often going to be just open strings as you tra transition, particularly like a D chord going to an E minor. One and two and three and four and one. So your fingers are going to be in the air for that upstroke and then it'll come back down on the chord. It's really important to get the chords right on beat one of the new chord, okay? But if you, want to, if you need to move your fingers a little earlier, it's not going to matter on a pattern like that at all. In fact, you'll hear that kind of thing going on on every recording of, of that that's using that kind of pattern with an upstroke on the and after four. Very often open strings, so don't be fussed about that. But that's a really nice pattern for the Love you so much, can't count all the ways I die for you, girl, and all you can see is Is not your kind of up, up, down, up I'll never get tired of putting you down But all you can tell me not come around Okay, and that's going to train you up nicely for doing a more advanced pattern, okay? It's a really, really good pattern, that one. So, again, just to remind you, one and two and three and four and down, up, up, down, up, up, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Okay, now, that pattern's definitely in there. There's quite a few layers of guitar on the original recording, which is great. I love songs with lots of layers. But it can be a little bit confusing when you're listening as a beginner to try and figure out, well, what's the actual pattern? So that's one of the patterns. Um, another pattern, which is more advanced, requires this kind of percussive hit to get involved with. And now, this is normally something I cover in a kind of intermediate level guitar playing. But if you're a beginner, there's no harm in trying to kind of get this together early. Um, all it is is that on beat two and four, we have to learn to do this muted percussive hit. Okay, now, this is definitely not, if you're just introduced to stage four on my beginner's course and you're learning this song, I definitely wouldn't get stuck into doing this now. I'd go through, you know, simpler strumming patterns first of all and make sure you got all of that well together before you attempt this. Um, and what we do is, it, it's kind of like a down strum, but we let this outer side of the hand hit the strings first, and then the pick comes down. So we hand, then pick, hand, then pick, and eventually, it becomes just one motion. You can see there now. Now, I'm not, I'm not using this hand, okay? If, if you use this hand, you can do a muted hit like that, but it's a different effect. So keep this hand off when you're learning, and learn to do that. If you're not doing it right, you'll get a lot of this sort of sound if you're not synchronizing it right. So, hand pick. So how you learn hand pick, hand pick, hand pick, and then eventually see if you can make it flow into one action, okay? Now, once you can do that, we're gonna put that hit on beats two and four. Okay, that previous pattern had a gap on two and four. Now we're going to put a hit in it. Okay, so on the E minor, down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit, up, down, up. Lovely groove, lovely rhythm pattern. Really like it. 
down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit, up, down, up, hit. That's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, there's a couple of slightly fancier things where he's going. Just to, there's only a couple of them through the thing. I, I know I, I copied it there at the beginning because I could hear it on the original recording right at the start. The very first strumming you hear is this down, up, you, down, up, down, up, you. It's a little double time thing. D even trickier again, I'd, only for more advanced guitar players that one for sure. But down, up, you, down, up, down, up, you, up, down. And then it's back to normal. So it's just a little like a fill in this. Okay, you have to jump into double time and then back out again. It can be a little bit tricky, so just be careful of that. So that's the pattern that I would be generally playing for the verses. So love you so much, can't count all the ways are tough for you, girl, but all they can see is it's not my kind, not your kind, I should. Okay, that pattern works really, really lovely for the verses. So, um, and actually, while we're still on the verses, I'll show you the intro as well. I'll tell you what the intro is. Uh, we've got an E minor chord first. Uh, but what's actually happening, we're using fingers one and two to play the E minor. Then we pick the fifth string, then the third string, then little finger needs to go, it's uh, actually the seventh fret, but it's four frets above the capo, okay? So to count from the capo, it'll be two frets above where your fingers are, it's probably the easiest way to think of it. So strum, fifth string, third string, little finger goes down four frets above the capo, and then two. A, one, A. Okay, it's just a little intro. D to the rhythm. Okay, really, I mean, it's a classic intro. Really, it is very, very uh, amazing arrangement, this, particularly this period. Very groundbreaking. And it's got loads of cool, there's even more to come yet on this particular song. So, um, in the chorus, what's another really interesting thing about this song is that usually that it steps up for the chorus and the choruses get bigger and more produced. And in, in this particular song, um, it seems to kind of chill out a little bit more there. Um, so you probably what you would want to start with is just doing single strum. So, don't you know, girl, dun, dun, you'll be a woman soon. Sounds really interesting, but I know that you just want to go because it's just so obvious that it's just uh, on the original guitar part. It's, it might be there in the in the rhythm part, but it's an overdub part, definitely that, that that that's making that part so strong and so recognizable. But it is quite easy to add in as a thing if you play E minor with fingers one and two. You've got that note, that little melody, using your little finger in the third fret of the thinner string then third finger in the second fret of the thinner string, and then the open string. But with the open string is the A chord. So E minor, A. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, D, two, E minor, two, three, four, E minor, A. Come take my hand. So that would be a definite starting point, is just to add that in, your E minor, A, you'll be a D chord, E minor, E minor, A. It's such an iconic part of that song, it's, it's part of the melody, it's not just the voice, it's one of those guitar lines that becomes part of the, part of the, the theme of the song. Now, uh, the original, recording starts as a, with a thing that I call picked finger style, which is again, this is an intermediate level thing, where you, you're you playing with a pick, but it's almost like you're doing finger style, where you make sure you hit the bass note of the chord on the, on the beat, but then you pick more or less random notes from the chord. So, go. doing the same every time, you know. I'm just literally trying to give a bit of a strum on beat one. I'm going for the da 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 on the A, but then I'm just doing D. Oh, right on the beat I want to go on that bass note, but the rest isn't. Now here, 
I want that again on the A. is a bit random e minor. okay but what's really interesting about it there's that picked finger style you can explore that in the intermediate course um, and the way that it morphs in on the original recording is into old faithful strumming so down down up up down so it's kind of moving from that starts very just like and again there's a few layers By the second time, it's almost there. And I think that's a really nice little kind of bridging thing to have this into the this strumming into the verses when you bring back the I think that's a really, really kind of nice progression, the little sparse intro, that thing, then into, you've got the percussive hit, then into that real big slowdown where you're just spreading the chords, lots of space, a little, you know, picking out a few extra notes, but don't go too busy with it, and remember that it has to stay in time, so even if you're just picking out some of the notes, it's not like suddenly free time, you want to make sure that you're keeping the pulse, yeah, if you're playing with a metronome, you're not going to fall out of time with it, it's very important that you, you keep your time. But just pick out a few of those notes and then gradually morph it into Old Faithful, down, down, up, up, down, one, two, and, and four, one, two, and, and four, and then get that back into the, into the um, strumming pattern with the percussive hits. That's a really, really nice little uh, arrangement. Um, the only other chord sequence that you need to be aware of is that there's a little uh, instrumental section in the bridge where it's going from two bars of C to two bars of B7, okay, so regular C. Now, I should just point out as well, uh, I don't think there's other points in this song, or there's one other point in the song where I'm playing a C. Um, in this kind of era, like the 60s stuff, a lot of times when you play C chord, instead of playing the regular C chord using three fingers, you want to move your third finger over onto the thicker string and put little finger down where the third finger was. So it's third fret, third fret, second fret, open, first, open. Okay, it, officially it's called a C with a G bass, but in the 60s they just seem to play this instead of regular C all the time. It's got a certain character about it that, that I think works really well. So whenever I'm playing this sort of thing, I'm generally going to be, you know, this era, if I'm playing C, probably going to be C with a G bass, particularly Con with like Neil Young and that California scene as well. Um, and the other chord is, so it's two bars of C and then two bars of B7. Okay, so hopefully you know your B7 chord is in the, the beginner's course. Uh, if you're only on stage four, you probably haven't encountered that one yet, so you might struggle a little bit to play the just that little bit of the bridge but uh, the rest of the song is a really really classic uh, classic one to do and again I reiterate if you're a beginner just be happy to keep the strumming real simple and play along with the original recording it's really good experience to do that just playing along making sure you get your chord changes fast enough once you're cool with that try using some other strumming patterns that you know because it's not you know strumming patterns aren't rigid where you have to use this particular one for this particular song um, so try out a few different strumming patterns that you like and then if you if you can get to it try doing that one that's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and if you can do that then you can try adding your percussive hit in or not you can try adding your your picked finger style or not and you can work on trying to morph your picked finger style into that strumming pattern thing there's a lot a lot of very cool things on this one um so actually one more thing uh, i get excited about this one so cool um one thing that I, I really love in this tune is the, the blend of acoustic and electric stuff going on as well. So if you happen to have a jam buddy and one of you can play some acoustic guitar and somebody can play an electric guitar with a clean sound, a little bit of tremolo or vibrato on the sound and the, the vibrato sound just strums and lets it go wobble or do a bit of picked finger style over the top while, while you're doing that uh, percussive hit on the verses you just go to pick out a few notes that kind of thing, while with a, with a clean sound, with some tremolo, a lot of reverb. Oh, that's a super delicious sound. That one, so a really good soundscape and quite an inspiring thing to be getting going on uh, if you're getting into jamming, which I highly recommend you do. You learn a lot jamming with your buddies if you can, if you've got a jam buddy that you can play with. Really good fun. So. Um, have yourself a great time with this tune, and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.